Hey Jim Jam fam, welcome back to the channel. I am uber excited to tell you about my favorite addition to our home. As you saw in a previous video, I'll put the link somewhere over here. Janice and I actually started taking lessons together at the local Five Iron. And when you take lessons, you need to take what you learn and go to the driving range to practice. And for us, that's a little bit more difficult in the city. So for us to get to any outdoor driving range, it is at least a 20 minute drive. And then if we go to an indoor simulator, like a five iron, it's about 45 to $50 or $55 per hour to rent. And given kind of how busy we are with school and work, we thought we should take a stab at trying to see if we can build it in our own home. Our goal and budget for this project is to do this for less than $1,500. It is That is still a large sum of money. And we did our own calculations on how often we want to go to the driving range, how long we will stay there, how much buckets of balls will cost, how much it will be to rent simulators. And we thought this would be a worthwhile investment for us to improve our golf game. Without further ado, let's go. First item. Our process was built around four steps, or the four basics. Step one, measure the room you're gonna be in. The length, the width, and the height. Step two, you need a net. You gotta hit the ball into something. Step three, the mat. Where are you gonna hit the ball from? And last, the fun toy. There's so many different launch monitors out there and we're gonna provide some overview and how we made our decision. Starting with step one, we measured our room, which was 16 by 10 by nine feet. Step two, the net. It took us three tries to get this right. Our first net had a metal frame that was not collapsible. Our second net was very collapsible but it just took up a ton of floor real estate. So our third try was DIY. We made ours with PVC pipes and paint cloth, some small hangers and grommet tools to piece everything together for right around $100. And it left us all the room that we still needed to stretch and do our Peloton workouts. Step three, the mat. This was by far the easiest part. We found a hitting mat off of Amazon that was well reviewed and reasonably priced. And then we surrounded with AstroTurf carpet from Home Depot for like 22 bucks so that we can create a 10 foot long space to also practice some putting. And step four, the fun toy. As I previously mentioned, there are so many launch monitors out there, and the ones on this screen is not even close to covering them all. But we ended up narrowing down to three based on our budget and our goals to improve our golf game. The key criteria for evaluation were the price, including any additional subscription fees, the data points that the software provides us, the operating system compatibility, the simulation software, usability, including how easy it is to set up, and any additional highlights that might be unique to each individual simulator. The first simulator we tried was the OptiShot 2. It was $450, but the thing is you need to pay a lot of additional money to do online play. Anywhere from $60 up to $500 depending on the league and the courses that you want to try. It did come with a decent amount of data points that allowed you to see if you were hitting a draw or slicing or hooking and what your general face was angle was, but it still lagged compared to some of the bigger players in the market. Operating system compatibility was a major benefit for OptiShot. It works both with Windows and Mac and all you have to do is plug in a USB port. It also has its own proprietary simulation software. It comes with 15 standard courses, including a lot of local tracks here in our Chicago area, 
and then it's an additional $30 for courses that you might want to purchase separately. Usability was kind of variable because it really depends on the environment you are in. It's definitely indoors only, and lighting is a critical factor to how this simulator performs. It might just be our home, but I think the lighting really impacted the sensors because the yardage for my 8 iron was about 30 to 40 yards shorter than the TrackMan software that we used at 5 iron. One unique thing about OptiShot is that you can use it without a ball. The infrared sensors detect club face and then simulates ball flight. Overall, the OptiShot's highlights were its great price point at less than $500 and the super super easy setup process. The second launch mantra we tried was the SkyTrack. It retails for just shy of $2,000, so this gets us to a completely different price tier, and that's not even including the $1 to $200 per year game plans. The benefits of the SkyTrack is that this is more of a game improvement technology. It has way more data points, the probably the ones that you're more familiar with, like you see on the TrackMan with ball speed, launch angle, backspin, sightspin, so on and so forth. It's compatible with any iOS or Android device, as well as Windows PC. So essentially, the only thing you can use is a MacBook. For simulator software, you're going to have to pay even more money to download and get licensed for E6 or WGT or the golf club. For usability, it was really easy to set up and as for where do you use it, the website indicates this is indoor and outdoor with a warning that it does not work well in direct sunlight. So I'm just going to say that this is for indoor only. The other major benefit for SkyTrack is that it requires the least amount of space. You essentially just place it a couple feet in front of you. There's a laser light that kind of indicates where you need to place the ball before hitting and you're good to go. This feature is definitely the highlight of a SkyTrack. It really opens up accessibility to a lot of people who might be looking to build a launch monitor but do not have a large room available. The third and final launch monitor that we tried was the Flyscope Mevo Plus. It retails for $2,000 and as of early 2022, they released a firmware update called the Pro Package that costs $1,000 to download. One of its strengths is the amount of data points it has, which is five more than the SkyTrack. And if you opted to buy the Pro Package, you get 11 additional data points, with the biggest one being Club Face and Club Path. The Mevo Plus is compatible with most iOS and Android devices. When it comes to simulator software, your purchase comes included with an E6 membership with 5 courses, 17 simulation driving ranges, and mini games, which is a great value. The Mevo Plus is also very versatile, being able to be used outdoors, indoors, and even has an indoor short mode for those with not as much room to build a simulator. For additional notes, the main downside of the device is that it only has a 1.5 hour battery life. So you either need to plug it in, or if you bring it with you on a trip, you have to have a mobile charging battery. But there are also a lot of great additional highlights that comes with the Mevo Plus, including video capabilities, so you can match the data to recordings of your swing that's recorded in the software. You can revisit your clips and look at your swing data, as well as mark up your video to look at angles, alignment, uh, so that you can really plan how you're going to improve your game moving forward. The Mevo Plus also comes with an online user profile that stores all of your practice sessions and your videos. It's a great tool to use to help you improve your game, which I will highlight in a future video on how I'm using it to really progress my game in 2022. You guys might have been able to tell by the excitement of my voice, but we end up going with the Mevo Plus as our final launch monitor. We've been using it for a few weeks now and it's been a ton of fun on the simulation software. And the data I feel like has definitely made an impact on my approach to improving my game. 
even though the $2,000 price tag, because we have not purchased the pro package yet, it took us you know, $800 above our desired $1,500 budget, we felt like it's gonna be worth it in the long run because the combination of the data, the video recording and analysis aspect, and all the content that's available out there on YouTube, I feel like it's going to save us a lot of money at the driving range, as well as allowing us to really improve our game on our own in a self-directed way. So really excited to take you all on a journey with us as we improve both my game and Jansen's game in the next year or so. And hopefully we provide some content that'll be useful to you as you look to improve your game as well. So I hope everybody gets out the golf because the season's about to turn around, at least here in Chicago. And I hope you all just keep living in the moment.